eh, hicimos todos los esfuerzos para que dos personas, Robert Pillor y Albizac, estuvieran con nosotros, pero prepararon su intervención. La primera, la de Robert Pillor, de ocho minutos, y la vamos, la vamos a ver con los subtítulos. Es profesor de jurisprudencia en Princeton, estudió en Oxford, trabajó en la Comisión de Derechos Civiles de Estados Unidos y también lo hizo como académico de la Corte Suprema de los Estados Unidos. Actualmente se desempeña en el Consejo de Bioética del presidente de Estados Unidos y es miembro del Consejo de Relaciones Exteriores de ese, de ese país. I am Robert George. I'm the McCormick Professor of Jurisprudence at Princeton University and the director of Princeton's James Madison Program in American Ideals and Institutions. I'm also the author of two books on marriage, actually the co-author of two books on marriage. The first is What is Marriage, Man and Woman a Defense, which was published in 2012 by Encounter Books. My co-authors were Sharif Girgis and Ryan Anderson. The second is Conjugal Union, What Marriage Is and Why It Matters. That was published by Cambridge University Press in 2014, and my co-author was Patrick Lee. I've been interested in the marriage question, the meaning of marriage, the proper definition of marriage, how to strengthen marriage, and in particular, how to strengthen the marriage culture so that men and women and children and societies can get the great benefit of marriage since the 1980s. Uh, I've pursued the question in my scholarly writing, and I've also worked as an activist in the public square trying to strengthen marriage. I'm now very concerned that marriage is being redefined, indeed defined out of existence, abolished as a legal category, and replaced with something very different to which the label marriage is reassigned. Marriage is historically and rightly understood as a conjugal relationship. It's the union of husband and wife. It's the union of man and woman in a bond that is uniquely apt For the rearing of children. It's oriented toward procreation uh, and in the case of any particular couple would be naturally fulfilled by that couple having and rearing children together. Now of course not all families, not all couples will be blessed with children, but every child will have a mother and a father. And the point of marriage law, the reason societies recognize marriages in their legal systems, regulate marriages, promote and try to strengthen marriage, is that we want to maximize the chances that children will be brought up in the marital bond of their mother and father. In fact, marriage is the institution that unites man and woman, as husband and wife, to be father and mother to any children who are born of their union, conferring upon the children the inestimable gift of being brought up in the committed love, the marital bond of the male and female parents, whose coming together brought them into existence, linking them to the two families, the family of the mother and the family of the father, going all the way back into time. Marriage also, properly understood, is the relationship that ensures that for as many children as possible, the children will be brought up with both maternal and paternal influences and care. Men and women are not interchangeable. Mothers and fathers are not substitutable. The ideal circumstances for any child, for a little boy or for a little girl, the ideal circumstances are to be brought up with a mother who helps to model femininity for children, for daughters and for sons, and a father who helps to model masculinity. Now, many role models are not um, inherently male or female. And yet, we know that there are distinctive contributions to the project of child-rearing that are made by mothers and by fathers. And marriage, when it functions properly, provides those role models for children. We in the United States, as a result of a recent decision by the Supreme Court of the United States, have gone down the wrong road. We have made a terrible mistake. We have redefined marriage, instead of treating it as historically and rightly it has been treated as a conjugal partnership, we've now redefined it as a mere form of sexual romantic companionship or domestic partnership. And now we've reassigned the label marriage to that new thing. But that new thing can never be what marriage truly is and historically has been understood to be. It can never be 
the institution, uniquely in a society, that ensures to the extent possible that children will be brought up in the marital bond, the loving bond, the committed bond of a mother and father. I hope that Colombia will not make the same mistake. In fact, I and many others in the United States are, are working hard, really night and day, to reverse this error that we have made, an error that's been made by so many developed uh, countries. Uh, so we do hope that Colombia will not make the same error. Marriage is far too important to play with. Uh, getting marriage right is critical to the well-being of men and women, and above all, to children. The real victims, when marriage is lost, when marriage is defined out of existence, when it's replaced with something else, are children. And when children suffer, the whole of society suffers. When marriage is redefined as sexual romantic companionship or domestic partnership, when we abandon the historic conjugal understanding of marriage, we lose any ground of principle for clinging to, holding to, the norms that have traditionally structured marriage and made it what it is, the norms of monogamy and exclusivity, of fidelity, of permanence, we even lose any intelligible basis for understanding marriage as the relationship of two people and not three or four or five in so-called polyamorous sexual ensembles. And of course, we are seeing quite predictably that when marriage is redefined as something other than a conjugal relationship, when it's redefined to be sexual romantic companionship or domestic partnership, one immediately hears demands, perfectly intelligible given the logic of the thing, for marriage to no longer be regarded simply as the union of two people. So now there are three-person partnerships, so-called throuples, there is even a name for it now, who are demanding legal recognition as a marital unit. And no good argument can be given against them. No good argument can be made for the proposition that marriage is only two people when marriage has been redefined as a merely emotional bond and not a true conjugal partnership that's made possible by the sexual reproductive complementarity of men and women as embodied beings. So my hope for Colombia is that Colombia will remain true to the historic understanding of marriage. That's my hope for the men and women of Colombia. That's my hope for the children, especially, of Colombia. And uh, that's my hope for Colombian society. Colombia can be a beacon of hope for the rest of the world, as those of us in the United States and elsewhere try to turn things around, to remedy this horrible mistake that has been made of redefining marriage. I hope that we can look to Colombia as our role model.